The Northern and Southern Dynasties Chinese, Nan Bei Chao, Pinyin, Nan Bei Chao was a period in the history of China that lasted from 420 to 589, following the tumultuous era of the Sixteen Kingdoms and the Wuhu states. It is sometimes considered as the latter part of a longer period known as the Six Dynasties 220 to 589. Though an age of civil war and political chaos, it was also a time of flourishing arts and culture, advancement in technology, and the spread of Mahayana Buddhism and Taoism. The period saw large-scale migration of Han Chinese to the lands south of the Yangtze. The period came to an end with the unification of all of China proper by Emperor Wen of the Sui dynasty. During this period, the process of Sinicization accelerated among the non-Chinese arrivals in the north and among the indigenous people in the south. This process was also accompanied by the increasing popularity of Buddhism introduced into China in the first century in both northern and southern China and Taoism gaining influence as well, with two essential Taoist canons written during this period. Notable technological advances occurred during this period. The invention of the stirrup during the earlier Jin dynasty 265 helped spur the development of heavy cavalry as a combat standard. Historians also note advances in medicine, astronomy, mathematics, and cartography. Intellectuals of the period include the mathematician and astronomer Zhu Changzi Background <inaudible> 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 After the collapse of a united China under the Han dynasty in 220 due in large part to the Yellow Turban and the Five Pecks of Rice rebellions, China eventually coalesced into the Three Kingdoms. Of these, Cao Wei was the strongest, followed by Eastern Wu and Shu Han, but they were initially in a relatively stable formation. After a 249 coup by Sima Yi, the Sima family essentially controlled Cao Wei and the conquest of Shu by Wei rapidly followed. Following a failed coup by the ruling Cao family against the Sima family, the final Cao ruler abdicated. Sima Yan then founded the Jin dynasty as Emperor Wu of Jin and the conquest of Wu by Jin occurred in 280, ending the Three Kingdoms period and reuniting China. The Jin dynasty was severely weakened after the War of the Eight Princes from 291 to 306. During the reigns of Emperor Wei and Emperor Min, the country was put into grave danger with the uprising of the northern non-Han people collectively known as the Five Barbarians. Invading non-Han armies almost destroyed the dynasty in the disaster of Yangzhou of 311, when the Five Barbarians sacked Luoyang. Chang'an met a similar fate in 316. However, a scion of the royal house, Sima Rui, Prince of Langya, fled south of the Wai River to salvage what was left in order to sustain the empire, establishing himself as Emperor Yuan. Cementing their power in the south, the Jin established Jiangking on the existing site of Jiangka now Nanjing as their new capital, renaming the dynasty as the Eastern Jin since the new capital was located southeast of Luoyang. In the north, the five barbarians established numerous kingdoms, leading to the period being known as the Sixteen Kingdoms. Eventually, the Northern Wei conquered the rest of the northern states in 386. Although the Eastern Jin and successive Southern dynasties were well defended from the northern states by placement of naval fleets along the Yangtze, there were still various problems faced with building and maintaining military strength. The designation of specific households for military service in the Tushan system eventually led to a falling out in their social status, causing widespread desertion of troops on many occasions. Faced with shortage of troop numbers, Jin generals were often sent on campaigns to capture non-Chinese people in the south in order to draft them into the military. The Eastern Jin dynasty fell not because of external invasion, however, but because General Liu Yu seized the throne from Emperor Gong and establishing himself as Emperor Wu of Lu Song R. 420 which officially began the Northern and Southern dynasties. <laughs> Northern dynasties The Northern Dynasties began in 439 when the Northern Wei conquered the Northern Liang to unite Northern China and ended in 589 when Sui Dynasty extinguished the Chen Dynasty. It can be divided into three time periods, Northern Wei, Eastern and Western Weiss, Northern Qi and Northern Zhou. The Northern, Eastern, and Western Wei along with the Northern Zhou were established by the Shanbei people while the Northern Qi was established by Sinicized barbarians. Topic. 
Rise of Northern Way 386 to 535 and the Sinicization Movement. In the Sixteen Kingdoms period, the Tuba family of the Shanbei were the rulers of the state of Dai 16 kingdoms. Although it was conquered by the former Qin, the defeat of the former Qin at the Battle of Fei River resulted in the collapse of the former Qin. The grandson of the last prince of Dai Tuba Shiyijian, Tuba Gui restored the fortunes of the Tuba clan, renaming his state Wei, now known as Northern Wei with its capital at Shengel near modern Hohat. Under the rule of emperors Daowu, Tuba Gui, Mingyan, and Taiwu, the Northern Wei progressively expanded. The establishment of the early Northern Wei state and economy was also greatly indebted to the father-son pair of Kui Hong and Kui Hao. Tuba Gui engaged in numerous conflicts with the later Yan that ended favorably for the Northern Wei after they received help from Zhang Gun that allowed them to destroy the later Yan army at the Battle of Kanhe Slope. Following this victory, Tuba Gui conquered the later Yan capital of Pingcheng modern-day Datong. That same year he declared himself as Emperor Daowu. Due to Emperor Daowu's cruelty, he was killed by his son Tuba Shao, but Crown Prince Tuba Si managed to defeat Tuba Shao and took the throne as Emperor Mingyan. Though he managed to conquer Lu Song's province of Henan, he died soon afterwards. Emperor Mingyan's son Tuba Dao took the throne as Emperor Taiwu. Due to Emperor Taiwu's energetic efforts, Northern Wei's strength greatly increased, allowing them to repeatedly attack Lu Song. After dealing the Roran threat to his northern flank, he engaged in a war to unite northern China. With the fall of the northern Liang in 439, Emperor Taiwu united northern China, ending the Sixteen Kingdoms period and beginning the northern and southern dynasties period with their southern rivals, the Lu Song. Even though it was a time of great military strength for the northern Wei, because of Roran harassment in the north, they could not fully focus on their southern expeditions. After uniting the north, Emperor Taiwu also conquered the strong Shanshan kingdom and subjugated the other kingdoms of Xiyu, or the western regions. In 450, Emperor Taiwu once again attacked the Lu Song and reached Guabu, Guabu in modern Nanjing, Jiangsu, threatening to cross the river to attack Jiangking, the Lu Song capital. Though up to this point, the northern Wei military forces dominated the Lu Song forces, they took heavy casualties. The Northern Wei forces plundered numerous households before returning north. At this point, followers of the Buddhist Gai Wu, Gai Wu rebelled. After pacifying this rebellion, Emperor Taiwu, under the advice of his Taoist Prime Minister Kui Hao, proscribed Buddhism, in the first of the three disasters of Wu. At this late stage in his life, Emperor Taiwu meted out cruel punishments, which led to his death in 452 at the hands of the eunuch Zong Ai. This sparked off turmoil that only ended with the ascension of Emperor Wencheng later that same year. In the first half of the Northern Wei dynasty 386 to 534, the Shanbei steppe tribesmen who dominated northern China kept a policy of strict social distinction between them and their Chinese subjects. Chinese were drafted into the bureaucracy, employed as officials to collect taxes, etc. However, the Chinese were kept out of many higher positions of power. They also represented the minority of the populace where centers of power were located. Widespread social and cultural transformation in northern China came with Emperor Xiao Wen of Northern Wei reigned 471 to 499, whose father was a Shanbei, but whose mother was Chinese. Although of the Tuba clan from the Shanbei tribe, Emperor Xiao Wen asserted his dual Shanbei Chinese identity, renaming his own clan after the Chinese Yuan Yuan meaning elemental or origin. In the year 493 Emperor Xiao Wen instituted a new Sinification program that had the Shanbei elites conform to many Chinese standards. These social reforms included donning Chinese clothing banning Shanbei clothing at court, learning the Chinese language if under the age of 30, applied one-character Chinese surnames to Shanbei families, and encouraged the clans of high-ranking Shanbei and Chinese families to intermarry. Emperor Xiao Wen also moved the capital city from Pingcheng to one of China's old imperial sites, Luoyang, which had been the capital during the earlier Eastern Han and Western Jin dynasties. The new capital at Luoyang was revived and transformed, with roughly 150,000 Shanbei and other northern warriors moved from north to south to fill new ranks for the capital by the year 495. Within a couple decades, the population rose to about half a million residents, and was famed for being home to over a thousand Buddhist temples. 
Defectors from the South, such as Wang Su of the prestigious Langya Wang family, were largely accommodated and felt at home with the establishment of their own Wu quarter in Luoyang this quarter of the city was home to over 3,000 families. They were even served tea by this time gaining popularity in southern China at court instead of yogurt drinks commonly found in the north. In the year 523, Prince Dongyang of the Northern Wei was sent to Dunhuang to serve as its governor for a term of 15 years. With the religious force of Buddhism gaining mainstream acceptance in Chinese society, Prince Dongyang and local wealthy families set out to establish a monumental project in honor of Buddhism, carving and decorating Cave 285 of the Mogo Caves with beautiful statues and murals. This promotion of the arts would continue for centuries at Dunhuang, and is now one of China's greatest tourist attractions. In that same year of 523 a revolt of several military garrisons was caused by a food shortage far north of Luoyang. After this was suppressed, the government had 200,000 surrendered garrison rebels deployed to Hebei, which proved later to be a mistake when a former garrison officer organized another rebellion in the years 526-527. The Wei court was betrayed by one of their own generals, who had the Empress Dowager and the young emperor thrown into the Yellow River, while establishing his own puppet ruler to maintain authority. As conflict swelled in the north between successive leaders, Gao Huan took control of the east and Luoyang holding Emperor Xiao Jing of Eastern Wei as a puppet ruler by 534, while his rival Yuan Tai took control of the west and the traditional Chinese capital of Chang'an by 535. Eventually, Gao Huan's son Gao Yang forced the Eastern Wei Emperor to abdicate in favor of his claim to the throne, establishing the Northern Qi Dynasty 551 Afterwards, Yuan Tai's son Yuan Zhu seized the throne of power from Emperor Gong of Western Wei, establishing the Northern Zhou Dynasty 557 the Northern Zhou Dynasty was able to defeat and conquer Northern Qi in 577, reunifying the North. However, this success was short-lived, as the northern Zhou was overthrown in 581 by Yang Jian, who became Emperor Wen of Sui. With greater military power and morale, along with convincing propaganda that the Chen dynasty ruler Chen Shubao was a decadent ruler who had lost the Mandate of Heaven, the Sui dynasty was able to effectively conquer the South. After this conquest, the whole of China entered a new golden age of reunification under the centralization of the short-lived Sui dynasty and succeeding Tang dynasty 618 to 907. Topic: Eastern Wei 534 to 550. Topic: Western Wei 535 to 557. Topic: Northern Qi 550 to 577. Topic: Northern Zhou 557 to 581. Topic: Southern Dynasties. The Jin were succeeded by a series of short-lived dynasties: Lu Song (420 to 479), Southern Qi (479 to 502), Liang (502 to 557), and Chen (557 to 589). Because all of these dynasties had their capital at Jiangqing except Liang, they are sometimes grouped together with Eastern Wu and Eastern Jin as the six dynasties. The rulers of these short-lived dynasties were generals who seized and then held power for several decades but were unable to securely pass power of rule onto their heirs to continue their dynasty successfully. Emperor Wu of Liang was the most notable ruler of his age, being a patron of the arts and of Buddhism. Under the later waning leadership of the Chen dynasty, the southern Chinese were unable to resist the military power amassed in the north by Yang Jian, who declared himself Emperor Wen of Sui and invaded the south. Lu Song Lu Song founder Lu Yu was originally a leader of the Army of the Northern Garrison Chinese, Bei Fu Jun that notably won the Battle of Fei River in 383. In 404, he helped suppress Huan Zan's rebellion, leading to his dominance over the Eastern Jin court. In order to gain popularity to take the throne he led expeditions against the Sixteen Kingdoms, capturing Shandong, Henan and, briefly, Guanzhong by 416. 
He gave up Guangzhou to try to take the throne. Because he believed in a prophecy saying there would be one more emperor after Emperor An, he deposed the former and, soon afterwards, his replacement, Emperor Gong in 420, ending the Eastern Jin dynasty. Even after crowning himself Emperor Wu, Liu Yu remained frugal. However, he did not care for education and trusted unsavory people. He felt that the nobility had too much power, so he tended to appoint the lower classes to government positions and gave military power to imperial kinsmen. Ironically, because the imperial kinsmen stabilized their military power and wished to gain political power, Emperor Wu was afraid they would have thoughts of usurping the throne. Thus, he also frequently killed his kinsmen. After the death of Emperor Wu, his son Emperor Xiao ruled briefly before being judged incompetent and killed by government officials led by Xu Shanzi, replacing him with Emperor Wen, a different son, who soon killed the officials who supported him. Emperor Wen's reign was a period of relative political stability because of his frugality and good government. The period was called the Reign of Yuanjia Chinese. Yuan Jia Ji. In 430, Emperor Wen started a number of northern expeditions against Northern Wei. These were ineffective because of insufficient preparations and excessive micromanagement of his generals, decreasing weakening the dynasty. Because of his jealousy of Tan Dao Ji, a noted leader of the army of the northern garrison, he deprived himself of a formidable general to the great delight of the northern Wei. Thus, they were unable to capitalize when northern Wei suffered the Wuqi incident. Starting in 445, Northern Wei, taking advantage of Lu Song's weakness, made major incursions in the lands between the Yangtze and the Wai modern Shandong, Hebei, and Henan and devastating six provinces. Emperor Wen lamented that if Tan were still alive, he would have prevented Northern Wei advances. From then on, Lu Song was in a weakened state. Emperor Wen was assassinated by Crown Prince Xiao and Second Prince Jun in 453 after planning to punish them for witchcraft. However, they were both defeated by Third Prince Jun, who became Emperor Xiaowu, proved to be licentious and cruel, supposedly committing incest with the daughters of an uncle who had helped him gain the throne. His rivals also claimed he had incest with his mother. This led to two rebellions by the imperial clan, one of which saw him slaughter the inhabitants of Guangling. The following ballad gives an idea of those times Yao Wang Jian Kong Sheng looking toward Jiangking City. Xiao Zhang Ni Lu Ying The little river flows against the current. Qian Jian Zi Sha Fu in front, one sees sons killing fathers. Hu Jian Di Sha Shang and behind, one sees younger brothers killing older brothers. Emperor Xiaowu died naturally in 464 and was succeeded by his son, who became Emperor Chanfei. Emperor Chanfei proved to be similar to his father, engaging in both kin slaughter and incest. In a scandalous move, because his sister complained about how it was unfair that men were allowed 10,000 concubines, he gave her 30 handsome young men as lovers. His uncle Lu Yu, the Prince of Shangdong, whom he called the Prince of Pigs, for his obesity, eventually assassinated him and became Emperor Ming. Emperor Ming began his reign by killing all the descendants of Emperor Xiaowu, and his suspicious nature resulted in the loss of the provinces north of the Wai River, which were only briefly regained in the other southern dynasties. Emperor Ming's young son became Emperor Hofei. The political situation was volatile. General Xiao Daocheng slowly gained power and eventually deposed Emperor Hofei in favor of his brother, who became Emperor Shun. After defeating the rival general Shen Yuzi, Xiao forced Emperor Shun to yield to throne and crowned himself Emperor Gao of Southern Qi, thus ending the Lu Song dynasty. Topic: <laughs> Southern Qi 479 to 502. Though distantly related, the Southern Qi and the following Liang dynasty were members of the Xiao, Xiao family from Lanling, Lanling in modern Kangshan County, Shandong. Because Emperor Gao had a low social standing, he earned the disdain of nobility. His style of governance was similar to the early style of the Lu Song dynasty and was very economical. He died in the fourth year of his reign and his heir, who was only 13 years younger than him, succeeded him as Emperor Wu of Southern Qi. Emperor Wu made peace with the Northern Wei, content to protect his borders. This period of peace was known as Yangming administration. Yangming Ji. He also used government secretaries Dian Qian Guan appointed with provincial governors and members of the imperial clan to monitor them. 
The short reigns of Emperor Wu's grandsons, Xiao Jiaoyi and Xiao Jiaowen, his first son predeceased him, were dominated by Xiao Luan, Emperor Wu's first cousin. He killed them in turn and crowned himself as Emperor Ming of Southern Qi. Using the government secretaries, Dai and Qian Guan he slaughtered all the descendants of Emperors Gao and Wu. Emperor Ming soon became very ill and started following Taoism, changing his whole wardrobe to red. He also passed an edict making officials try to find silver fish. Yin he died in 498 and was succeeded by his son Xiao Baowan, who killed high officials and governors at whim, sparking many revolts. The final revolt in 501 started after Xiao Baojun killed his prime minister Xiao Yi, leading his brother Xiao Yan to revolt under the banner of Xiao Baojun's brother who was declared Emperor He of Southern Qi. Xiao Baojun was killed by one of his generals during the siege of his capital at Jiangking, and after a short puppet reign by Emperor He, Xiao Yan overthrew the Southern Qi and established the Liang dynasty. Topic. Liang 502 Emperor Wu was economical, worked hard at governing, and cared for the common people. His early reign was known as Reign of Tianjian. Tianjian the Liang dynasty's military strength gradually surpassed the strength of the Northern Wei, who suffered internal strife due to their policy of cynicization. In 503, the Northern Wei invaded but were defeated at Zhongli modern Bungbu. Emperor Wu supported the northern expeditions but did not aggressively take advantage of his victory in 516 at Shuyang due to heavy casualties. Given the excessive kin slaughter in the Lu Song and Southern Qi dynasties, Emperor Wu was very lenient to imperial clansmen, not even investigating them when they committed crimes. Because he was very learned, supported scholars, and encouraged the flourishing education system, the Liang dynasty reached a cultural peak. An avid poet, Emperor Wu was fond of gathering many literary talents at court, and even held poetry competitions with prizes of gold or silk for those considered the best. In his later years, however, sycophants surrounded him. Three times he dedicated his life Shishen to Buddhism and tried to become a monk, but each time he was persuaded to return by extravagant court donations to Buddhism. Furthermore, since Buddhists and Taoists were exempt from taxation, nearly half of the population fraudulently named themselves as such, badly damaging state finances. Imperial clansmen and officials were also greedy and wasteful. Emperor Wu was willing to accept generals who defected from Northern Wei, so when Northern Wei suffered major revolts in their northern garrison towns, he sent his general Chen Qingzi to support the pretender Yuan Hao. Despite the fact that Chen was only given 7,000 troops, he still managed to defeat army after army and even captured Luoyang, the capital of Northern Wei. Ultimately, Chen was insufficiently supplied and was defeated by troops ten times his size. After the Northern Wei split into Eastern and Western Wei, Emperor Wu granted asylum to rebel Eastern Wei commander Hu Jing, sending him on Northern expeditions against Eastern Wei. After some initial successes, Liang forces were decisively defeated. Rumors abounded that Emperor Wu intended to give Hu as a peace offering. Despite Emperor Wu's assurances, Hu decided to rebel in the name of Xiao Dong, the grandson of the former Crown Prince Xiao Tong who died in 531 and was removed from Crown Prince because of conflicts with his father. Hu surprised Emperor Liang by besieging the Liang capital at Jiangking. Attempts by Liang forces to break the siege failed, and Emperor Wu was forced to negotiate a ceasefire and peace. However, Hu thought that peace was unsustainable, so he broke the ceasefire and captured the palace, leading to the slaughter of the nearby populace. Emperor Wu was starved to death and after the short puppet reigns of Crown Prince Xiao Gang and Xiao Dong, Hu seized power and established the Han dynasty. In spite of conquering Jiangking, Hu essentially only controlled the nearby areas. The rest of the Liang dynasty lands were under the control of members of the imperial clan. Their squabbling amongst themselves weakened their efforts to defeat Hu. In the end, Xiao Yi with the aid of his generals Wang Sengbian and Chen Baxian defeated Hu, crowning himself Emperor Yuan of Liang. His brother Xiao Ji based in Sichuan was still a major threat. Emperor Yuan asked for assistance from Western Wei to defeat Xiao Ji, but after subduing Xiao Ji, they kept Sichuan. Due to a diplomatic faux pas, he incited the anger of Yuan Tai, the leading general of Western Wei, which resulted in him being deposed and dying. Western Wei set up the puppet state of Western Liang with capital at Jiangling. 
Northern Qi also had designs on the Liang throne and sent an expedition under the banner of a cousin of Emperor Yuan. Chen Baxian and Wang Sengbian set up the last surviving son of Emperor Yuan, Xiao Fangzi, as Liang ruler, but he was not given the imperial title. After some defeats to the forces of Northern Qi, Wang Sengbian allowed their pretender, Xiao Yuanming to establish himself as Emperor Min of Liang. However, Chen Baxian was displeased with the arrangements, and in a surprise move killed Wang and deposed Emperor Min in favor of Xiao Fangzi who became Emperor Jing of Liang. After a short reign, Chen deposed Emperor Jing and took power himself as Emperor Wu of Chen in 557. Topic. Chen 557 Emperor Wu of Chen came from the region of Wu a region near modern-day Shanghai. At that time, due to the Hu Jing Rebellion, the Chao and Wu clans were greatly weakened, and many independent regimes emerged. Emperor Wu could not pacify all the independent regimes, so he adopted conciliatory measures. After the sudden death of Emperor Wu, his nephew Chen Qian took power as Emperor Wen of Chen. After the fall of Liang, the general Wang Lin had established an independent kingdom based in modern-day Hunan and Hubei provinces and was now starting to cause trouble. Wang Lin allied with Northern Zhou and Northern Qi to conquer the Chen capital at Jiangqing. Emperor Wen first defeated the combined forces of Northern Qi and Wang Lin before preventing the forces of Northern Zhou from entering the south at Yueyang. Furthermore, through Emperor Wen's extensive efforts at good governance, the economic situation of the South was greatly improved, restoring his kingdom's national strength. Following the death of Emperor Wen, his son, the weak-willed Chen Bozong, took power and became Emperor Fei of Chen. His uncle, Chen Shu, after essentially controlling the country through his short reign, eventually deposed him and took power as Emperor Zan of Chen. At that time, the Northern Zhou intended to conquer Northern Qi and thus invited the Chen dynasty to help. Emperor Zan agreed to help because he wanted to recover the lost territories south of the Wai River. In 573, he sent General Wu Mingqi to assist the effort. In two years, he managed to recover he lost territories south of the Wai River. At the time, Northern Qi was in a precarious situation with little military strength and Emperor Zan could have taken advantage of the opportunity to entirely defeat Northern Qi. However, he only wanted to protect his territories south of the Wai River. Northern Zhou instead took advantage of Northern Qi's weakness and following their defeat of Northern Qi, in 577, they sent troops to the territories south of the Wai River, where they decisively defeated the Chen dynasty forces. The Chen dynasty was in imminent danger. In a stroke of fortune, Northern Zhou's Emperor Wu suddenly died and his general Yang Jian attempted to take the throne. This stopped the southern advance of the northern troops. The respite was short though as after Yang Jian defeated his rival general Yu Qi Zhang, he usurped the throne from Emperor Jing of Northern Zhou and established the Sui dynasty, crowning himself Emperor Wen of Sui. He proceeded to invade the south to reunify China. Emperor Zan had just died and his incompetent son Chen Shubao Huzu of Chen took power. He was licentious and wasteful, resulting in chaos and corruption in the government. Many officials heavily exploited the people, causing great suffering. In planning tactics to defeat the Chen dynasty, Emperor Wen of Sui took the suggestion of his general Gao Zhang and waited until the south were harvesting their crops to entirely burn the farmland, crippling the strength of the Chen dynasty. In 588, Emperor Wen of Sui sent his son Yang Guang who would become Emperor Yang of Sui to finally vanquish the Chen dynasty. Chen Shubao relied on the natural barrier of the Yangtze River and continued as always with his festive and licentious activities. The next year, Sui forces captured the Chen capital of Jiangqing. Chen Shubao and his favorite concubine Zhang Lehua attempted to hide in a well but eventually were captured by Sui forces, thus ending the Chen dynasty. Topic. Culture Topic. Philosophy Confucianism's unchallenged domination of Chinese culture and thought was greatly weakened during the Jin dynasty, which led to a wide diversification of political thought and philosophy by the time of the northern and southern dynasties. 
This era produced a myriad of writers that advocated practical systems of governance and administration, such as Cao Cao and Zhuge Liang in the Three Kingdoms period, Wang Dao and Bao Jingyan of the Eastern Jin, as well as Fan Zhen, Xing Shao Chinese, Xing Shao and Fan Xuan Chinese, Fan Xuan of the Northern and Southern period. Much of the philosophy of the period is despondent and dispirited, and a number of scholars and poets became reclusive mountain hermits living apart from society. Of these various trends, the most influential was Neo-Daoism Chinese, Zan Zhe Pinyin, Zan Zhe. Neo-Daoism was highly influential during the Southern Dynasty, to the point that Emperor Wen of Lu Song established a Neo-Daoist academy and promoted it, along with Confucianism, literature, and history, as the four great subjects of study. A phenomenon known as empty chat Chinese, Qing Tan Pinyin, Qing Tan became common, where educated men would meet and talk about philosophy all day without paying any attention to mundane things such as their profession or family. The phenomenon gradually waned during the Sui dynasty, though it did not fully disappear until the Tang dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> Literature Literature was particularly vibrant during the Southern Dynasty and tended to be flowery and frilly, while Northern Dynasty literature was rougher and more straightforward. Notable writers include Yu Xin, Xing Fang, Wei Shou, and Wen Zisheng of the Northern Dynasty. In poetry, Fu poetry continued to be a dominant genre, though the five syllable form that achieved great prominence during the Tang Dynasty gradually increased in popularity. In the Southern Dynasty, a type of essay known as Pian Wen Chinese, Pian Wen which used metered rhyme, flowery language, and classical allusions, became popular. Writings often spoke of removing oneself from everyday material existence and jettisoning cares and anxiety. Poets of the Northern and Southern Dynasties focused on imitating older classical poets of ancient China, formalizing the rhyme patterns and meters that governed poem composition. However, scholars realized that ancient songs and poems, like those of the Xijing, in many instances no longer rhymed due to sound shifts over the previous centuries. The introduction of Buddhism to China, which began in the late Han dynasty and continued through the Tang dynasty, introduced Chinese scholars to Sanskrit. The Brahmi script, with its sophisticated phonological organization, arrived in China in the 5th century, and was studied by Xie Lingyun, who produced a since lost glossary of Chinese transcriptions of Sanskrit terms, arranged according to the 14 sounds. The four tones of early Middle Chinese were first described by Shen Yu and Zhou Yang. Other arts The southern dynasties of China were rich in cultural achievement, with the flourishing of Buddhism and Taoism, especially the latter as two new canons of scriptural writings were created for the Supreme Purity sect and its rival the Numinous Treasure sect. The southern Chinese were influenced greatly by the writings of Buddhist monks such as Huyuan, who applied familiar Taoist terms to describe Buddhism for other Chinese. The Chinese were in contact and influenced by cultures of India and trading partners farther south, such as the kingdoms of Funan and Champa located in modern-day Cambodia and Vietnam. The sophistication and complexity of the Chinese arts of poetry, calligraphy, painting, and playing of music reached new heights during this age. The earlier Cao Ji, son of Cao Cao, is regarded as one of the greatest poets of his day. His style and deep emotional expression in writing influenced later poets of this new age, such as Dao Qian (365–427) or Dao Yuanming. Even during his lifetime, the written calligraphy of the Sage of Calligraphy, Wang Zizi (307–365), was prized by many and considered a true form of personal expression like other arts. Painting became highly prized with artists such as Gu Kezi (344–406), who largely established the tradition of landscape art in classical Chinese painting. To learn more, refer to the Far East section of the article for painting. Institutions of learning in the South were also renowned, including the Zongmingguan Imperial Nanjing University, where the famed Zhu Changzi, mentioned above, had studied. 
Zhu Chongzi devised the new Daiming calendar in 465, calculated one year as 365.2428148181 days which is very close to 365.2421987 days as we know today, and calculated the number of overlaps between Sun and Moon as 27.21223 which is very close to 27.21222 as we know today. Using this number he successfully predicted four eclipses during a period of 23 years from 436 to 459. Although multiple story towers such as guard towers and residential apartments existed in previous periods, during this period the distinct Chinese pagoda tower for storing Buddhist scriptures evolved from the stupa, the latter originating from Buddhist traditions of protecting sutras in ancient India. Demographic changes It was during the Northern and Southern Dynasties period that the earliest recorded migration of ethnic Han Chinese to southern China below the Yangtze River took place. This sinicization helped to develop the region from its previous state of being inhabited by only small and isolated communities separated by vast uncolonized wilderness of non-Chinese ethnic groups. During this period, the South went from being nearly a frontier to being on a path to the thriving, urbanized, sinicized region that it became in later centuries. In his book Buddhism in Chinese History, Arthur F. Wright points out this fact by stating, When we speak of the area of the Yangtze Valley and below in the period of disunion, we must banish from our minds the picture of the densely populated, intensively cultivated South China of recent centuries. When the aristocrats of the remnants of the Qin Jin ruling house fled to the Nanking Nanjing area early in the 4th century, the south contained perhaps a tenth of the population of China. There were centers of Chinese culture and administration, but around most of these lay vast uncolonized areas into which Chinese settlers were slow to move. <laughs> Maps Topic. See also Timeline of the Northern and Southern Dynasties Chinese Sovereign List of tributaries of Imperial China Buddhism in China Empress Dowager Hu Northern Wei. Yan Zhitui Jinping Commandary Topic. Notes Topic References Topic Further reading Budberg, Peter A. nineteen thirty eight Marginalia to the Histories of the Northern Dynasties Harvard Journal of Asiatic Studies, three three quarters, two hundred twenty three to two hundred fifty three JSTOR two million seven hundred seventeen thousand seven hundred seventy six 1939. Marginalia to the Histories of the Northern Dynasties. Harvard Journal of Asiatic Studies, 4 3 quarters, 230-283. JSTOR 2717776. Graf, David A. Medieval Chinese Warfare, 300-900. ISBN 0-415-23954-0. Abray, Patricia Buckley, Walthall, Anne, Palais, James B. 2006. East Asia, A Cultural, Social, and Political History. Boston, Houghton Mifflin. ISBN 978-0-618-13384-0. Lewis, Mark Edward 2009. China Between Empires, The Northern and Southern Dynasties. Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-02605-6. Miller, Roy Andrew Accounts of Western Nations in the History of the Northern Cho Dynasty. University of California Press. Wright, Arthur F. Buddhism in Chinese History. Stanford, Stanford University Press. External links Period of the Northern and Southern Dynasties Early Imperial China, a working collection of resources